So let's say that something has a frequency of 4 hertz. Now, first of all, how do we interpret that 4 hertz? Four cycles of one it takes one second to do four cycles. Mm -hmm. Or in one second, we can do four cycles. Well, then how many radians are they going through per second? If they're going through four cycles per second, how many radians are they going through per second? Eight pi. Eight pi, yeah. Each cycle is two pi radians. So the first cycle takes them to 2 pi radians, then the second cycle takes them to 4 pi radians, then 6 pi radians, and then the fourth cycle takes them to 8 pi radians. So their angular frequency would be 8 pi radians. Good. Or let's say that the frequency was 3 hertz. How do we interpret that? Good. How do we interpret the 3 hertz? Um, 3 cycles over 1 second. It takes 1 second for every 3 cycles. Yeah, it takes 1 second for 3 cycles. So how many radians can we go through in a second? Well, 6 pi. 3 cycles is 3 times 2 pi, which is 6 pi. All right, the point of looking at this is to show that you can see why this is also called a type of frequency. Because it's giving you very similar information to this over here. Um, so is the, is the angular frequency a measure of fastness or slowness? Because it's really directly related to the regular frequency. If we're going through many cycles per second, we'll be going through many radians per second. The more cycles we're going through per second, the more radians we're going through per second. So these are really just two different ways of measuring the same thing. It's really almost just like measuring the same thing in different units. It's almost like saying, uh, it's almost like the difference between saying um, that you're going uh, 60 miles uh, per hour or one mile per minute. That's just uh, describing the same thing in different units. So this is almost just changing from units of cycles to radians, but it's measuring the same thing. All right, so how did we figure out, how did you figure out the angular frequency? If you think about it, what you did is you took the frequency and multiplied it by 2 pi. Mm -hmm. Well, that would give us our general formula then. The angular frequency is 2 pi times the regular frequency. Angular frequency is 2 pi times the regular frequency. That's the, the formula you kind of figured out for yourself right here. To find omega, you just took 3 times 2 pi. So you kind of proved on your own that this is the formula. So we should write this above the arrow again. So now we know if we're given this unit, how do we figure out, if we're given this concept, how do we figure out this concept? Well, we'll use this formula. And then how would we figure out the period? Well, we would use this. So the things we're putting above the arrow are supposed to be uh, the links between these concepts. The biggest mistake people make here is they put the 2 pi on the wrong side. Sometimes people say, it's easy to misremember and write it like this. So you want to make sure in your cheat sheet you have it written out uh, correctly. If you kind of thought, uh, forgot where the 2 pi went, I guess you could figure it out with a little example like this. But it's best just to have it in your notes. Okay. Let's figure out the frequency. I won't bother to put the units in. We know that if we put in standard units, we'll get out standard units. So like you said. OK, let's go ahead and do that calculation. About 
3.2. What are the units on this? Um, hertz. Good, hertz. And what would be a better, uh, more interpretable form of hertz? Cycles per one second. Cycles per second. Good, so how would we interpret this number? Um, for every one second, you get 3.2 seconds. Right, or it takes a second to go through I should say, in a second, we can go through 3.2 seconds. All right, in a second, we can go through 3.2 seconds. So follow-up question, what's the period for this wave? Okay, we definitely want to actually crank out that calculation. How could, what calculation do we have to do here? 3.3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 0.3125. So usually we're going to be wanting to get things down to a decimal answer. That's the most comparable with other things. Uh, and what would be the units on this? Uh, second. For one second. How would we interpret this? Yeah, here we use the word takes. It takes point, about 3.3 seconds to go through a cycle. All right, and again, you can kind of leave the units out here if you want, because we know it will come out of the standard units. All right, now, I made this too easy. Um, on a real test question, they would just say, here's omega, what's the period? All right, and then you would have to say to yourself, aha, first I have to go from omega to frequency. And then I have to go from frequency to period. All right, so this is the advantage of having these in one chart, so you can see the relationship between these. So you can say, oh, if I want to start with omega and go to the period, first I use this equation, and then I use this equation. Okay. Okay, so that's our angular frequency. And we've just seen that this is also a, me a measure of the fastness that we're oscillating at, because it's directly related to the regular frequency. Let's go back to our graph here. So we were kind of assuming all along that this horizontal axis is different positions. So these are different positions we're looking at. And then the vertical axis here, we can call y, this is our displacements. This is how far the, the, uh, the wave is displaced from equilibrium at each point. For example, at this point is at maximum displacement from equilibrium. This is at intermediate displacement from equilibrium. This point is at equilibrium, so y is 0. This point is at the maximum displacement below the equilibrium. I'll erase the dot. Now, let's say that we wanted to put the wavelength on here. Let's say we had to take this graph and label the distance that the wavelength represents. So what would be a good starting point and ending point for the distance that represents the wavelength? Um, from crest to crest. Yeah, good. That would be one wavelength. What would be another way that we could indicate the wavelength? Um, from equilibrium to equilibrium. Like from here to here? From, uh, corresponding rising. equilibrium to corresponding equilibrium. So maybe we should stay away from the equilibrium. But if you're going to do that, it's got to be from upward sloping equilibrium to upward sloping equilibrium. This would only be half a wavelength over here. All right, so yeah, this would be one complete wavelength. Mm -hmm. But that can be confusing, so maybe we'll focus on here from trough to trough. Mm -hmm. That would definitely be one complete wavelength. Okay. But you could go from one corresponding equilibrium to the other corresponding equilibrium, or from any corresponding point on the wave to the next corresponding point. But the easiest points to pick out are the crests and the troughs. So those are usually the ones we focus on. OK, so this gives us our concept of wavelength. So now over here, I'm going to put our concept of wavelength. 
What was the symbol for wavelength? Lambda. Yeah, so we need to know that this is the Greek letter lambda. That's uh, the Greek letter for L, L for length. So lambda for length. I uh, remember this was omega. 